And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Folks, one of my favorite genres is superheroes. And 10 years ago, I was saddened because there was very few good superhero games. Now, we're starting to see more of them legendary. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse, you know, it's exciting. And so now we have a new one here called Heroes Wanted. Heroes want it, you're trying to become the, uh, a hero who the big team in the city, the great Justice League per se, they want you to join them. So you want to be a good enough hero. But you're more of a hero of the mystery men variant, okay? Really odd uh, creature. And you're going to fight some odd crime and fight some odd villains in a very comic booky way. Now, over the course of this review, I'm going to be sh also showing you some different cards from the game. There's a little expansion for this called uh, Expansion Deck Number 1. <laughs> extra, extra, I guess it's called. And um, so I mixed all that stuff in because it's just more heroes, more villains and stuff. Doesn't change the game at all, but I want you to know that not every card you see is in the base game. Some of them are here, but there's still plenty in the base game to have fun with. Anyway, here we go. beginning of the game, players are going to be dealt three hero cards from each of these stacks, A and B. And with those, you get to make all sorts of different superheroes. And this is the part of the game that I find really hilarious. So let's take a look at some random superheroes. Uh, you put them together. Here we have the Crimson Computer. Each superhero has a ability up here in the top. Uh, so he's a tech a superhero, uh, the Crimson Computer. And then they have a superpower here. And then something that like gives you a special bonus down here. Your main focus is the top one. The secondary one is something smaller. Here we have the Turbo Viking. <clears throat> now he is a vigilante. Uh, vigilantes are pretty cool because they have a pressure luck ability usually with them. Here, you know, rolling a die to see what happens. And then we have the Combat Tornado. Now he's a cosmic superhero. Um, so, you know, energy, think something like that. Uh, let's see, we got... Titanium Bot. Oh, that actually works, kind of. Um, another tech hero. And then we have Fancy Bullet. <laughs> and then we have, let's see, Hobo Fury. And we have Magnetic Phantom. And we have Barefoot Ninja. And Nitro Weevil. And Robo Giraffe. Oh, wait. One more card for Robo Giraffe. Uh... I need to slide you down so you can fit your whole head in. <laughs> they have an extra card. I thought that was really funny. And so there's just lots and lots of different things. There's mutants too. Here's a mutant one. Mutants have a superpower and they have a mutant power. And this is what? Super Dude. So these are the heroes. The villains are put together the same way. So let's take a look at some villains. Here we have Denim Doom and Omega Face and Sketchy Hyena and Unstoppable Punk. Well, that's kind of scary. And Toxic Grin, one of the freakiest pictures in the game. And Ape Taco. That doesn't even make any sense. And Mama Terror. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna pick, you're gonna have one villain that you're fighting against, and you're also going to be picking your hero. At the beginning of the game, players are going to pick their superhero. So here I have Master Proton. Players are also going to have a quirk. So I can put this down here. And what this quirk is, is it adds like humor to the game. So in, for example, here, after you complete a headline, which is getting some victory points, you have to do a victory dance. And so let's say I was the purple color. I have a token here. Anytime I did not do this, the token has to move down one if another player catches me. And there's all sorts of different quirks. Uh, here's a couple more. Uh, narciss Narcissist's pose after you KO a henchman or deal damage to a villain. You must pose heroically or an awkward catchphrase. After you activate your superpower, you must state your full catchphrase, which here would be, Behold, my subatomic might, 10 years as a mountain, and a lot of self-help books have granted me serenity. That's kind of an awkward catchphrase, don't you think? Then, depending on what type of hero you are, 
In this case, I'm a mutant. You'll put your hero bonus up here. And on top of this, you're going to put discs. Um, every time you complete a headline in the game, which is accomplishing a victory goal per se, you're going to take one of these discs off, which can give you a special ability. Players are going to get a st starting hand of cards. Here you have Maneuver, Costume, Charge, Strike, and Superpower. Everyone gets those, and then you'll get two more cards depending on who you are. I'm a mutant, so I get Surge and Mutant Power. The, the Surge is an epic action, and so this goes next to the board. I don't get this in my hand until I take both these discs out here, which I then gain Surge. So I start with these, this hand of cards. And there's, you know, different cards, Press and Retaliate for the Vigilantes, Deflect and Blast for Cosmos, and Gizmo and Gadget for the Tech Heroes. So now I'm ready to go. Over here's a spot to keep my injuries. You don't want injuries over the course of the game. Every time you're knocked out, you'll add an injury. And at the end of the game, if you have more than five, you'll lose two fame each time that happens. Achievements is where you put things that you get, usually when you beat up henchmen and minions. You'll be placing them here to show how many you've done. Now, there's four boards that are included with this game. This is the Bootleg Battle Royale. This is one where you're stopping uh, the villain from <laughs> bootlegging DVDs. We also have Bedlam at the Zeta City Asylum. On the other side of that board, we have the Littering, Loitering, and Jaywalking. And then there's one more scenario on the other side of here. You also have a Fame Track over here. This is to keep track of your victory points. Notice they can go negative if that happens. You have counters to keep track of hit points. And then on the board itself, you can see here's the villain. Each villain has a superpower. This is an awful villain, Octopudo. I can't, oh, hideous. And then next what you have headlines. Now each board plays in a very different way. So this one here, you need to KO two boxes. Yes, and this, you are actually punching out two boxes of DVDs. But you also have other things that you can do. And anytime you do one of these things, let's say I, made, I, I KO'd another hero. I would then get to take one of those discs off my card and place it here, which at the end of the game is going to give me the points that I place it on. So when you complete a headline, not only do you get to activate a power on your, on your card, but you also get to get victory points that are here. Now, the game is going to take place here on this threat track. And the threat's going to go down each turn, and the villain will go, and the villain usually will attack everybody on the board. You can see the villain right here. And your heroes are these little uh, nondescript pawns that will start on the board. The villain will attack you, and so will any henchmen or minions that are next to you. And each villain does different damage. For example here, Manjur Poodle, he does 5 damage to each hero. Any hero that's not KO'd after defending this damage may move 1. And then... He also, at the beginning of the villain phase, he roll two dice. If you roll an eight, each hero has to discard an epic action. Okay? So anyhow, the villain will attack you and the minions will attack you each turn. Whenever you get to a yellow spot, something else will happen. In this case, the villain starts blowing up the DVD factory. And when you get to a red spot, more henchmen will show up. And so the henchmen will come in on any spot where you've killed a henchman, new henchmen will get blown up. On a hero's turn, they're going to be playing a card, and these cards will give you different actions. Sometimes the actions, uh, like this one here, says become the first hero. So that means you go first next turn, and then deal five damage to a character that's within range one. Move one and do four damage to a character within range one. And if you're the first hero, you get plus one move. This is move one, this is a block, I'll talk about this in a second. Move four, become the first hero, or retrieve a basic or special action. Superpower, activate your superpower. Or here, activate your mutant power. It's because I'm a mutant. So I, when that happens, I go to my card and I look at my superpower. In this case here, my superpower is an ion bubble, which lets me KO a minion. Um, with my uh, attack, deal five damage to a hero or a villain within range one. Or I can attach my token to a minion. That minion cannot be KO'd by the heroes as long as your uh, thing is attacked. So I have to actually put this token on somebody. And I have these tokens that I can use for that purpose. Uh, and then down here you have a special ability also on the character uh, underneath him. But up here are your powers that you can use. Now when the villains attack you, you can also play cards. At that point you're playing cards for their numbers. You need to play the discard cards 
equal to the damage that's being dealt to you so that you can avoid all that damage. In fact, that's what the block card, the one I showed you earlier, is used for this costume. Block, I can block seven of the damage and also when it happens, I can move one or retrieve an action. See, whenever you play a card, you play it and leave it in front of you. You have to take a rest action to get all your cards in your hand. And you would be surprised how quickly you have to do that and decide when to do it. So as the game goes by, you're going to be beating up these little guys. There are a few hit points and the, the henchmen, the minions are a little bit more hit points in this scenario. You're beating up boxes, but you're also trying to beat up the boss. And when you beat up the different minions and the henchmen, it gives you points. And there's lots of different scoring that can happen in game. In this scenario, whenever you KO a henchman or underling, you get two or one points. You can take out another hero for four, take out a box for one, or take out the main big bad villain, you get three. And at the end of the game, you get points for the different headlines, uh, for your quirks, uh, for every two damage you dealt to the villain. Every time you do damage to the villain, you'll take some damage and put it in your ach achievement so you know how much damage you've done to the villain. And then some more, most henchmen, most underlings, and so on and so forth. There's some special rules for each scenario, but whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Okay, the theme is spot on. I think it's hilarious that you were going around and stopping a villain from making bootleg DVDs or stopping him from uh, littering, <laughs> you know, because it just, it, it fits the thing. If you've ever seen the movie Mystery Men, this is kind of the, a game that's based on that universe. I love the diversity. And before I go any farther, this is my biggest problem with this game is the diversity kind of annoys me. There are so many different heroes. And there are so many different villains, and yet in each game I see one villain. Except for the Asylum scenario, in which you see three, and which is the reason I will almost always try to pick that one, so I can see three different villains. I don't know, I just like a little bit of that diversity. I mean, granted, you're going to be able to play a different game thousands of times, probably, with the diversity in here. I just wish I could see more of this stuff. That being said... The card management system is very interesting. I mean, there's, there's not much rolling of dice, and I like rolling dice, so I almost always want to play a Vigilante just so I can get to roll dice for my special abilities. Um, different Vigilantes have different uh, superpowers uh, depending on what they roll the dice. For example, let's find a Vigilante here. The Knight, he can roll a die on a 1 to 3, he becomes the first hero. On a 4 to 6, he gets one of his actions back. Justice, uh, he can roll a die and that's how much damage he does to someone within range 1. Um, uh, Fist does 7 damage to a character within range 1, and then he can do a die worth of damage to a hero within range 1. So I, I, I love that randomosity, so I try to pick Vigilantes. But I like the cards. I like the fact that you can get another card. I like the fact that what type of hero you are depends on your, you know, determines your hands of cards. And knowing when to play your cards, when to pick them up is pretty interesting. The gameplay, you know, you're basically going around as beating up minions and henchmen, trying to get to that, and avoiding each other. Now, some people will have a problem with that part of the game, I think, where you can beat up the other hero, but and, and you're usually best, like, staying away from the other heroes. You know, I, I don't want to be around you because you, the, getting the finishing knockout blow on another hero gets you points. It's hard to take a hero out, and it's kind of a waste of your time, but if they're weak, I mean, if I trip them, you know, into the conveyor belt with knives, what happens? So I find that part of the game very humorous, but I can see some people won't. Other people will probably not like the quirks because this is what I call forced humor. But at the same time, uh, when we played, it just was so funny. There was one where you're like an uh, obsessive creepy quirk. And so anytime somebody does uh, their, one of their powers, you have, or whenever they, someone becomes the first player, you have to touch them and say your name, introduce yourself in a whisper. And so I'd be like, hey, I'm Ugly Rhino. You know, and it, got, it just got funny when a guy stands up and he had to announce when someone else had done something. This sort of thing, I think, adds humor. And the rules hint that you can take these out, I think, and play the game without them, if you'd like. And I think the game would work fine without them. It just adds humor to it. The components are fine. The hero pawns were a little, eh. At the same time, I don't think they can make a pawn for every hero. The artwork is a great. Love the artwork. Hands down, exactly what I'm looking for in this style of game. Uh, so... You know, and it's, it has four different scenarios in it, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, having a board, which, and they use both sides of the boards. Companies of the world, take note. You can use both sides of the boards. Anyway, so overall, my impressions are good. I think it's a solid game. It has some very funny stuff in it. It has, a, you know, you're moving around, card management, heroes, lots of diversity. I think it could have been 
uh, maybe developed a little bit more. Maybe we could have seen um, some more, I, I don't know, uh, ways to introduce more villains, maybe bring a little bit more life to the minions and henchmen, but I'm not really concerned about that. This game, I think, is exactly what it's advertised to be, and I think there's a crowd of people out there who will really enjoy this game. I liked it quite a bit. I found the humor hit me strong, but it wasn't just humor. The gameplay of knowing when to play these cards and when to try it out with the other person and when to punch the guy next to you, I thought came through pretty strongly. So check this one out. It certainly isn't for everyone, but I think the combination of theme with cool game mechanisms is gonna attract people. And this is a superhero game that comes from a different angle and I think it succeeds. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.